Hi, and welcome to the first of a series of tutorials on research design and statistical applications for the allied health professional. My name is Dr. June Kamei, and as a starting introduction, I did want to discuss how the various research designs that are typically described in clinical studies might be used by practicing clinicians when looking for answers to some specific patient care questions. The reason this is important is because one of the main tools that guide how healthcare professionals decide what to do with patients is through the use of something called evidence-based practice. Evidence-based practice, or EBP, as it's often abbreviated as, was first defined by Dr. David Sackett in 1996 as the conscientious, explicit, and judicious use of the current best evidence in making decisions about the care of individual patients. To explain exactly how research evidence from the literature really fits into the idea of evidence-based practice, we can refer to uh, a figure taken from Portney and Watkins' Foundation of Clinical Research Textbook, which shows how from um, evidence-based practice it takes the clinical question and guides us through the clinical decision-making process for a final outcome of patient management using four uh, four main considerations in our reasoning. If we consider three of those corners, they are fairly uh, static in nature. The patient wishes are one of the most important considerations, which we get through narrative reasoning and find out from them what they really want to have done with them. The clinical circumstances and setting is something that's also fairly finite. We definitely work within a clinical scenario and work within the challenges and um, attributes that each setting can provide. And the clinical expertise is an ongoing development of our own clinical skill sets. So given the fact that those three uh, tiers are something that's fairly defined already, the one area that we have available to us that we can expand or not expand depending upon our choice is the use of the best research evidence available. This evidence is often compartmentalized into three main categories. The first is called descriptive, where it describes basically what is going on with a particular patient population, but isn't does not attempt to make any kind of conclusions um, or inferences beyond just describing what that particular patient or series of patients is presenting as. The exploratory research design methods seeks to find relationships between different factors that we might not necessarily compare. And the third type of research design is, ca is the category which refers to what we normally think of as research or experimental where it has a cause and effect inference and conclusion that we might make. As clinicians, many of us are most familiar with the design known as the case study descriptive research method, which in that case, the case study typically depicts the clinical symptoms manifested in one or a small group of individuals, which in that case is called a case series, and notes how those individuals were treated along with their outcomes and overall prognosis. However, since this information is provided as an after effect, having already occurred in clinic typically and is now here being described in detail, it cannot be said to have undergone the scientific rigor of a classical experimental design. In fact, by the strict definition of how a case study is given, one might not even call this type of scholarly work research since as the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has defined research, it is research is known as a systematic investigation, including research development, testing, and evaluation designed to develop or contribute to generalizable knowledge. In the case of a case study, <laughs> it is not really where there's generalizable knowledge given, although if we perhaps find a patient that presents exactly the same as the one depicted in the case study, we might try to think that we would see the same things occurring there, but it is by no means something that we can apply to a larger population. So if we're considering what are the different kinds of research designs available, which one should we actually use to address the clinical question we have at hand? And it really depends not only on the question, 
but also what about the focus of the question you are looking at. If, for example, very little is known, you may want to do a descriptive study, as in the case study we just discussed. However, if a little more is known, such as the clinical presentation of a patient that we are looking at, but we're not really sure what the circumstances are that are related to it, we might want to do an exploratory study. In those situations, you might see a paper that talks about correlational aspects, looking at associations or relationships between different factors that are um, at play within the clinical scenario. But if you believe you know what's going on, what the phenomena is, and you want to test out whether or not certain underlying factors might affect the final outcome, then you might want to do something known as an experimental design, which in this case tests a specific hypothesis given as a declarative statement of what you believe will happen, and then you can see whether or not this is actually the case. So again, the answer really depends upon what is known already about the topic and what it is you personally want to find out about the clinical question that tells you which type of research design you should be looking at. Let's take a look at this a little more closely. Very often a case study or a case series, or when you have more than one person, is chosen because there is something very unique about the way the, these people are presenting or perhaps there's something unique about a treatment intervention that the authors found particularly effective or even a particular model of intervention or treatment that they might have used. Um, in that case, they might be providing detailed descriptive information about those individuals so that in the scenario where you might find that same kind of person, you might use that same kind of treatment intervention or perhaps see individuals who may be also uniquely presenting in a similar manner. In that case, you are not saying that there is a cause and effect um, phenomena happening, but simply to inform their fellow clinician that a patient coming into their clinic may possibly have clinical symptoms that are manifested in a way that they found their patient presenting, something very unique. Um, so, in that case, you may see an article that talks about the clinical scenario, symptoms presented, the particularly unique factors of the treatment given, and you may even have associated descriptive statistics. Very often, case studies are confused for an experimental research design method, but it shouldn't be. That The inference that you can make is only that if you found a patient that was exactly the same as their patient, they may or may not um, present in a very similar way. They might, or they may also, you might also choose to use a treatment that they used to treat your patient. This is different from when you're going to do an exploratory study, such as a correlational study, where there's enough known about the different types of clinical symptoms or manifestations that you might see about a particular patient, but you're not really sure what the different factors are that are driving this clinical manifestation from happening. In other words, you're looking to see if there are relationships or associations between factors that may seem completely separate from each other, for example, the age of a patient and their ability to um, carry out a certain treatment intervention and see if there's some relationship such that if one goes up, in the case of a direct relationship, um, then the other factor would also go up uh, quantitatively. In that case, again, you're trying to identify if there's associations between seemingly different factors. You might use um, statistics that are correlational in nature and a parametric version that you might see is known as the Pearson, the non-parametric is Spearman, and that will be going we'll be going over that in a separate tutorial. But again, just like the case study or the descriptive studies, you cannot make any kind of conclusions that have a cause and effect nature to it. Even though you may see some statistics in the results of that paper that are descriptive in nature or even inferential of some kind as correlational statistics appear to be, um, but we have to be very careful. Cause and effect in this type of study is also not done. 
The gold standard, of course, for cause and effect studies is known as the randomized control trial, which is a type of experimental research design which will give information typically about the validity and reliability of the outcome assessments used. There may be discussions about the clinical relevance of the, the outcome assessments used, including effect sizes or minimal uh, clinical important detectable differences. Um, there'll be information as to what phase of the clinical trial is occurring in, the, in their uh, study. And all of these different factors lead up to a more stringent scientific rigor, which in this case allows you to make um, inferences important in a clinical design that says you can have a cause and effect analysis or conclusion made depending on what the findings were for that particular study. And similar to the correlational or exploratory study, you'll see also descriptive statistics given. You need to know what your subject populations were presenting as, how old they were, how many, how many people were men versus women, and, and so on, as well as the inferential statistics from which you could make a uh, conclusion from. So the bottom line um, of this tutorial is that it is very important to remember when you're considering different types of research studies as part of your evidence-based practice to know what the purpose of your clinical question is. Do you really want to know what the phenomenon is happening in terms of an exploratory study? Do you want to know if a really unique clinical presentation you are seeing with your patient has happened before, which might be appropriate to find a good case study on? Or do you want to know if there is a known cause and effect phenomena with respect to some intervention you want to use in the clinic, in which case you are looking for an experimental research design? And once you've found those particular studies that you think are particularly relevant for your clinical reasoning, uh, clinical scenario, you want to be sure that you are relating the correct research design with the allowable inferences or conclusions you can use to apply to your own clinical scenario. There can be no cause and effect assumptions, for example, using the findings from a case study. Okay, so I hope this was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in my next tutorial. Thank you.